please join me in welcoming James, everyone. I'd like to start with James. Could you tell us a little bit about your, uh, first of all, what you studied and then your career so far? Yeah, so um, I started off doing the Game Art 3D Animation course here at AIE uh, back in 2015, I think it was. Um, so originally I wanted to pursue video games, uh, but that sort of isn't how it panned out. Um, so basically after graduating in 2017, I was contacted uh, on LinkedIn by a, a film studio in Melbourne named Allura. Um, and I ended up having an art test there, uh, eventually got the job and uh, relocated to Melbourne. Uh, while I was there, I worked on four films, uh, Aquaman, Men in Black, It 2, and John Wick 3. Um, my, my role there was a uh, model texture artist. Uh, so I did both modeling and the texturing of those assets. And it, it's pretty commonplace um, to, to have that kind of role. Um, after Aquaman, I was lucky enough to be purely uh, texture artist. So for John Wick, It, and uh, Men in Black, I was uh, texturing all the environment assets that the environment team were modeling and things like that. Uh, I finished up there in April, and I moved back to Sydney because it, my partner was still in Sydney, so it was best for me to move back. It was long distance, too much. Um, so after that, I applied for a job at Quixel. Uh, they have a online library of 3D assets and surfaces uh, called Megascans. Um, and I just started a job there about two weeks ago. And uh, I'll be heading to Sweden to meet the team and things like that uh, at the end of the month. Um, and so for them, I'm basically doing uh, promotional material for uh, Megascans and Quixel as a whole. Um, yeah. That's and Quixel's the studio that makes the software that, that all these yes, studios right, will, yeah. will use. Nice. Yeah. So your, your role there is to essentially show people how powerful their tools are so that they think, That's right. dang, James is making some cool stuff. That's I know right, it'd be cool yeah. like him. Yes. <laughs> um, can you, you briefly mention how uh, Allura approached you? Um, yep. Do you know if they saw a particular item mm. in your portfolio that was really interesting or, or how that came about? Yeah, so um, I was doing some freelance work for a friend of mine um, doing some... Uh, procedural materials for uh, Unreal Engine uh, for Swinburne University. Um, and he at the time was working at Allura um, and he knew that I was just finished graduating. Uh, so he put my name forward um, and then the recruiters had a look at my portfolio and they, they saw what they, they liked. Um, but at the time my portfolio was completely just textures. Um, and the film studio itself was looking for model and textures. So during my art test there, um, I actually had to model, like they gave me a, a thing to model, I think it was like a grandfather clock or something like that, um, just to show that I can do that side of things as well, um, because at the time they weren't just hiring mod, uh, text writers. Um, so basically, yeah, like a little bit of luck, I reckon. <laughs> um, but majority it was like my portfolio was full of procedural textures. Um, using Substance, some of you might have seen Finn before uh, using Substance, um, and they were sort of moving towards that pipeline of Substance, and because um, at, at the time and still now, uh, Mari is a, a, a really big uh, software package used for film because you can do crazy like resolutions and things like that, um, and it's really great for close-ups and things. Um, so. Yeah, my portfolio being mainly all substance, uh, that was a, a real eye catcher for them, I think, um, and they got my foot in the door. Because this type of procedural uh, texturing, it's still relatively new, would you say, or has it been around for a, a long time? Um, substance designer itself has been around for quite some time, um, but it used to be, I think it used to be like a, a plugin for After Effects, um, but I mean, in within the industry, uh, at least, especially within film, I think it's quite new. Um, they're, they're sort of, Substance is sort of getting to the stage now where they can handle all these crazy resolutions that you need to have photorealistic things in film. Um, so yeah, I'd say it is quite new and a lot of studios are still trying to get on board with it. 
Um, some are still probably a bit reluctant, um, but I think it's yeah, it's going in the right direction. Nice. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to talk about it, but the shots like the ones that are behind us, are you allowed to mention the kinds of things that you were doing on those? Yeah, yeah. Um, so for this in Aquaman, uh, a lot of this was shot on blue screen. There's actually a video on YouTube by the director, James Wan. Uh, he did, I think it was on the Vanity YouTube channel, uh, he did a breakdown of the, these shots here. Um, and in that you'd see that a lot of this is j actually just blue screen. Um, so some of these buildings that were further down, they were actually on set, but all the rest of the city that you see in the background and all that, there's nothing there, it's just blue screen. Um, so we had to replace that, we had to build that city from the ground up. Um, and so my role uh, at Method, well sorry, Allura, that's another thing, Allura switched to Method eventually, we'll get into that later. Um, so my, my role there uh, was, as I said, a model texture artist and I was assigned to modelling a lot of those buildings um, as well as texturing them and modelling a lot of roof tiles. Um, and things like debris and all that kind of stuff, it's all CG, so that's pretty much my role there. Nice, cool. Um, what's an average day like at a visual effects studio or, or the first two weeks you've had at Quixel when you're told, okay, we want you to make these roof tiles. It, do they say you have to do a whole bunch of research on how it looks or has someone else in the art department figured out what they, they want them to look like and they, how do they delegate those tasks, I guess? Yeah, like a lot of the time, the client that you're making a film for will provide reference for you. They have, they already, most of the time, they already have a vision of what they want. Um, so for this, for example, this is uh, Sicily. So they had a lot of reference for Sicily and that was easy enough to Google and all that kind of stuff. Um, so for that, it was quite easy. Um, for, some, for some films, things that are like sci-fi, it can be a bit harder. There's still a vision there, but you might have to do some concepting and things like that. Um, but for the most part, uh, yeah, you get assigned a task and all tasks would usually just have reference alongside it um, and you just get paid to go and do it, yeah. Do they say this is this is the scene in the movie where the hero is doing this, or is it just like you can't know anything else about the project, just make these roof tiles look amazing? No, usually we, we do get context. Um, so usually before a film st uh, kicks off, before we start making it, we have a, a, a meeting with all the other departments and things like that, and we get taken through the shots and told, okay, this is what we have to do here, this is what we have to do there. Um, any important notes will be mentioned there and things like that. Um, but throughout the whole process of creating this, we get to see our shots. So we can, um, we can see what it's like before, we can throw in our, our, our models and textures and things into that shot as well um, to see if everything sort of matches how they want and it gives, uh, it gives your heads of department uh, context um, as well. So yeah, like you, you, you do get to see everything you briefly mentioned before that you had to sit an art test uh, for the position. Yes. Uh, what does that look like? Do they say you've got uh, this, this many hours or this many days to create uh, an asset like the grandfather clock? Yeah, so for me, um, I actually asked for the art test um, because, as I said, they wanted model, uh, a model and texture. I didn't have any models. Um, so I just said, look, I'm, I'm happy to, to sit an art test if, if there's something you want. Um, because at AIE you learn both modelling and texturing, you do a bit of everything. Um, so it's not that I couldn't model, it was just that wasn't my preferred specialisation. Um, so I asked for that and they agreed um, and they gave me the grandfather clock. Uh, they didn't really give me any more context than that, they just said we want you to do a grandfather clock. Um, and they gave me a week to do that, so I did that uh, and a few days later they were happy with it, I had another interview and then got the job. Yeah. And is that a similar process for Quixel as well? Do they, an art test, or because you had worked on these four films, were they able to say, okay, no, you have that experience now, so we can skip some of those steps? Yeah, Quixel, uh, when I applied, there was an art test, um, but I didn't actually have to sit it. Um, basically, at, at, at Method, I was still, it was crunch time, so there was a lot of work on, there was, we were working on three films or something at the time, and I just didn't have a lot of time. Um, so I actually went to pull my application out with them. I just said, look, I don't have the time, sorry for wasting your time. 
Um, and they decided that they'll just continue on with my application anyway. Um, so I ended up having an interview with them and within uh, two weeks or so I had the job, yeah. What drew you to becoming a texture artist? And did you know that was even a position before coming along to, to AIA? No, I didn't. I, when, I, when I came to AIA, like, I dabbled in things like Unity and Unreal and things like that, but I was never, I never really touched the modeling program. I'd never touched the texturing program. I came here really fresh, not knowing anything. Um, and yes, yeah, so I didn't really know a lot about anything. Um, and I sort of, I started off doing models and things throughout AIE and I started getting into the texturing side of things and I sort of thought, oh, this is really, really cool. Uh, Quixel was, Quixel Suite was one of the first pieces of software I used for texturing. Um, and it was very, to me at the time, it was very drag and drop. Like I can get this material and drag it on and like, oh look, I've got made this awesome thing that wasn't awesome. Um, and so it's sort of, that got me to look into it more. And then I discovered Substance, um, Substance Painter and I got into that. Uh, and then I got into Substance Designer, which is creating all the procedural materials and things like that. And it, it was definitely by chance. Uh, I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know it was really a position that people wanted until probably a year into AIE. Um, and then that's sort of when I started focusing on that and um, networking with other texture artists and things mm -hmm. like that. And I learned a lot through, through them as well. And Nice. So you had a look at what kind of positions were out there in the industry and thought, hey, I can see texture artists coming up a lot. Maybe I should start also focusing, focusing on that as well. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's always, it can always be a tough thing to specialise um, because a lot of studios still do like generalists, um, people who can do a bit of everything. Um, specialising, I guess you, you sort of have to be quite good at, at that. And it's... it's there's stud not all studios have s uh, specific texture roles. Um, a lot of them is you're modeling, you're texturing. In film, that's very common as well. You're a modeler, you're a texture artist, and you're a surface artist. You do all of it. Um, is, that, is that based on size? So if there's a bigger studio like uh, Allura Method, that they will have more specialized roles? No, I think some, some studios do have, uh, like Method, for example, we have a model texture department who do model and texture, and then we have a surfacing department. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I couldn't really say why. Um, so for me, like throughout my time at Allura slash Method, I was always a model texture artist. Mm -hmm. um, it was just on three of the projects that I got to specialize. Um, it, it can be more efficient, I find, yeah. if you have people modeling and then go straight to a texture artist to texture and go straight to surfacing, instead of um, you know one person focusing on one thing and it takes a bit longer to pump out or something like that, especially if they're stronger in one area than they are the other. And, yeah. cool. um, I've got more questions I'm going to uh, be asking, but if anyone out there has some questions, start thinking about them. We'll pop hands up in a bit and, mm -hmm. and you're more than welcome to, to ask some questions as well. Um, what skill, uh, not just skills, but what do you think makes a good texture artist? Like, is it, is it just generic eye for detail or is it stopping and, and problem solving how to produce the texture? Yeah, definitely an eye for detail. Um, I guess looking at a, being able to look at a surface and see the story behind it as well, it sounds a bit silly, but you know, this carpet, for example, it's been walked on and there's little bits of dirt and dust and stains and things like that. Look, f looking at those sorts of details and reproducing that um, in your textures uh, really goes a long way. Um, things like traditional painting and drawing and things like that can be really helpful as well. A lot of, uh, I know there's quite a few game studios that if you're applying for a texture artist position, that's recommended to have when you apply. Um, yeah, uh, it's mainly just really looking at a surface and seeing how it's built up and reproducing that. Yeah. Are there any bad habits you had as a student that you wish maybe you had gotten rid of sooner or is there things that you think people who are, are studying maybe in their first or second years should think, oh look, I understand that you might spend a lot of time doing this but this is what will be most beneficial to you? One thing I wish I did sooner would be networking. Um, 
for the first year or so at AIE, I sort of, I did my assignments and, you know, I passed them and then that was fine and I might do a bit of, uh, you know, work outside of AIE and things like that. Um, but reaching out to other artists on social media and uh, websites like Polycount and um, there's so many Facebook groups um, dedicated to art, like 10,000 Hours and um, reaching out to other artists asking for feedback, um, giving them feedback um, if you feel comfortable doing that, um, really sort of getting to know the people in your industry because it is a small industry. Um, you, you, I was at Method for you know, a year and a half and I met so many people that know friends of mine and know friends and friends and people who have relatives in different studios and everyone knows everyone and it's, it's um, it's really, really, really important to network and get people to see your work um, and it could open up a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Cool. So definitely putting yourself out there so that you might have an amazing portfolio, but if you're not getting it up on ArtStation or these critique groups, no one can see it, so no one can then recommend you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. When you were working at these studios, um, did you ever see what the, the modeling team or the animation team was doing or was it uh, all the texture artists were over in the corner here making amazing stuff or the animators were over there doing their thing? There is, to a certain degree, you do have communication with other departments. Um, so modeling, models and textures, um, they have a lot of communication with the surface artists and the layout team and the environment team. Um, so for example, in, in Aquaman, um, we would model text of the buildings and that would go to the layout team who will lay out everything and make build the city up and then that would go to the environment team and they like set, do set dressing and things like that and so there's always a lot of back and forth between these sort of departments um, and same again with animation and rigging and things like that um, if a, a, a character artist for example is modeling a character like say black manta there um, there's a lot of back and forth between him and rigging and rigging and animation because they might need more controls and things like that. So you definitely do have a lot of um, communication with other departments. Yeah. Cool. Um, Any questions out there? I can keep going. Cool, nice. I guess what advice would you have? This is a bit of a two-parter for students that are or people who might want to start studying this kind of thing in the future but might not be there yet. Maybe they're in year 11 or something along those lines and then for someone who's currently studying, what's the, the big two tips that you would give for, for those different groups? I think for people who are wanting to get into it, there's no reason why you can't start now. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait to start at AIE to learn uh, you know, modeling or texturing or whatever it is you, you, you wanna do. Um, there's so many resources online now and there's so many artists out there willing to help that you can just pick up a piece of software, whether it's an educational license or it's a free piece of software. Um, Blender, for example, is completely free. You could use that. Um, there's, yeah, there's so many resources available that you can just start learning the, at least the basics now um, before you get into AIE. Um, so don't, don't put it off, like actually just get in there and, yeah, and give it a shot. Yeah, just dive in and, and, and do it. Like there's so much out there. And for, for current students, work outside of AIE, do put in the hard yards. Um, don't, don't necessarily rely on AIE to, I guess, to get you a job, for example. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna learn a lot of skills here, but most of the work is gonna be what comes from you outside of AIE, um, yeah. yeah no, that's definitely something I hear a lot of the teachers always talking about, is, is the course, uh, even at the end of the two years, is a great starting point. Mm. But the students who get the jobs first are the ones who uh, take the knowledge that they learned in those tutorials and continue working on it. Because yep. once you've uh, built a game environment here, yeah, that's not the last game environment you're going to want to build. Or once you've written uh, code for a game, you're going to want to keep, keep working right. on yeah. that. Um, where would you like to your career to go in the future? So you're at Quixel now, which is fantastic. Yep. Um, I'm not saying that you want to leave there immediately, but yeah, like, yeah. Is, it, is there like then senior texture artist positions or, or, or you, what's the pathway from here? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Thank you. For, <laughs> for now, it's, it, my main focus is definitely on Quixel. Um, it's going to be opening a lot of opportunities for me. Um, I'm heading, they're flying me out to Sweden at the end of the month um, for just over a week. Um, 
but at the end of the six months, uh, there could be the possibility of relocating to Sweden full time. Um, so, yeah, I, I really just want to work on my skills as a tattoo artist um, and just be the best one I can, really. And, and that, I guess, comes back to what you were talking about, how you're doing work outside of AIE when you're a student, but even now that you're, you're with Quicks or the people who are making the tools, how do you continue to learn and, and continue to grow? I mean, focusing on procedural art, there's so many different ways of doing things and there's so many different techniques um, that you can't always, like, it's not good to get comfortable. Um, being at Quixel, I'm not like, yeah, I've made it, like, this is it. Like, you've never made it. You, you're always getting better and better and better. Um, and there's just always, always so much to learn. There's new technology coming out all the time. Um, so, yeah, it, it doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah no, so uh, in your role at Quixel, are you given, like, preview, uh, if you're allowed to talk about it, uh, preview tools and they're like, this we think is cool, can you experiment with it and, and see what you're able to produce? Yeah, so there, there's, you know, quite a long roadmap uh, for Quixel Mixer. Um, we do get private builds that we get to test and things like that. Uh, my main role there is producing uh, sort of marketing material for Quixel. Like. So I didn't get to work on that, damn it. <laughs> but, um, but things like this, exactly. Like, uh, was Do, like for the people that don't realise, that's all running in real time yes, in Unreal Engine. Yes, this is all real time. It's not pre-rendered or anything like that. It's running in Unreal Engine. Um, it was a team of like three people plus some like people from Side Effects, the Houdini guys. Um, they made this in about three months or something like that. Uh, so it's really incredible. Um, and it's all using photogrammetry and scan data. Um, so, yeah, I, I get to preview tools, um, but my main role there, producing marketing content. Uh, and at the same time, while doing that, I get to sort of have input in how the tools progress. Um, I might see something that I used in substance designer a year ago that I think could be used in Mixer to improve it and things like that. Um, so, also the tools are really artist driven, so that, yeah, that way they yeah. they improve based on how you use them. Yeah, exactly. Um, when you're working at a studio like uh, uh, Quixel or when you're with uh, Allura Method, what happens when you get stuck? Do you panic and say, "Oh no, I can't let anyone know that I, I don't know everything," or are there people who can help you you through those kind of moments? Yeah, definitely. Like, no one knows everything, right? So, y your head of department and your lead and all that, they're always going to be there to help you. I mean, that's their job, really. Um, so, you should never feel worried that, you know, they're going to think that you suck or anything like that. Like, ask for help. Um, and the same goes when you're learning, right? Like, if you get stuck on something while you're at AIE, ask. Or if you get stuck on something at home, reach out to someone online and ask, and people will help you. Yeah. That's been a common thread we see when often we have industry speakers in, in, in that sometimes as a junior in a role, you can sometimes think that you want to, to impress everyone with the amount that you know, but seeking that advice so that I guess you're saving them time as well rather right. than going off in a, a different direction. Yeah. And, you know, there's a thing called imposter syndrome where you, you, you might get a new role or you've got a, a project to work on at work and you sort of think, you know, oh, I'm not good enough for this, like why are they giving this to me and things like that. That's completely normal. Um, it happens to majority of people. It's just something you've got to deal with. Like chances are you are really good, um, but your brain just doesn't like telling you that. You know? <laughs> um, any questions out there? Yeah, go for it. And we'll just repeat the question back after you. you said. So the uh, question was, did you always want to be a, a texture artist or was there another pathway that you wanted to go down originally? But yeah, I guess before coming to AA, you mentioned that you wanted to work in games and stuff like that. Was it like, it's an animator or it's an artist that you wanted to be? Or you were kind of open to all of it a bit? I was open to all of it. I didn't know what I wanted to do for a very long time. Um, even before AIE, um, like my first job, I was a computer technician 
and then a network engineer, and then I was a, a web developer, and then I was a programmer. Um, and these are all things that I did because I enjoyed them, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I do art. Um, but I didn't really know that I was going to enjoy art until I discovered AIE. Um, and I had the chance to, to do the course here. Um, so when I was at AIE, I didn't really know for at least a year. Um, I was sort of still learning. It, it can be a bit daunting, like there's so many tools to learn. You gotta learn Maya, you gotta learn Substance, you gotta learn Quixel, you gotta learn, if you're in film, you gotta learn MOOC, and you gotta learn so many things. And it, yeah, it can be overwhelming. So for me, it, for a long time, it was just trying to sort of learn as many of the tools as I could. Um, and then eventually, once I sort of got comfortable with a lot of them, I sort of slowly focused on the one thing. Because I guess uh, before coming here, it's one of those things of those areas aren't necessarily exposed to people. Like a lot of people don't know even what a texture artist is. They That's, might just be yeah. familiar with animator or modeler. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you're making sure that you spent that first year being like, Look, I'll give everything a go. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, and then find out what, what's most attractive yep. to you. Um, any other questions out there? Cool. Well, that's all good. Um, you'll be hanging around for a, a little mm -hmm. bit afterwards if anyone does have any uh, questions that they wanted to ask but didn't want to ask in front of everyone because I totally understand what that's like. But thank you so much, James. And no please uh, join me in. <laughs> James, come by. Thank you.